Hello everybody, Michael here for Tactica Imperialis with a 40k stories video. Um, today we are going to be dealing with the history of, as far as I'm aware at least, the oldest race in the 40k background, and that is the Necrons. The Necrons uh, did not always exist as they are, but um, I'm going to go back to their origins, um, to their transformations, and to sort of present day. Now, for those who were out of the hobby when this codex came out, the Necrons fluff has changed massively. In the old fluff, they were slaves to the Gatan, um, and that was pretty much it. There wasn't much expansion in the fluff, it was an old codex, it was 3rd edition when there wasn't much fluff in there anyway. This 5th edition codex changed everything up. So, the same beginnings. Uh, the Necrons began as a race known as the Necron Tier. Uh, which is basically the same spelling as Necron, but with a T-Y-R on the end. And they were a very powerful race, um, but they were incredibly short-lived. Their lifespan was not very long at all. They had a good, strong um, space fleet. They had very powerful technology, such as Gauss weapons, or is it Gauss weapons, Tesla, and all the weapons you see now, but um, they were still living. So there were no metal bodies. They were just living, conscious beings, who lived and died, and they were ruled over by the Triarch, or you might call them the Triarch, and these were three um, leaders. One was known as the Silent King, who never spoke, and was sort of, he spoke through the, the other two members of the Triarch. Um, if you want to call them the Triarch, call them the Triarch, but I call them the Triarch. And these two spoke for the Silent King, and they ruled over the Necron tier. Um, and they were... Incredibly short-lived, as I said, and they had a real envy of a race known as the Old Ones. Uh, this was about 60 million years ago-ish. Uh, 60 million years at least ago. And so they were very jealous of this race known as the Old Ones, because the Old Ones were near immortal, if not immortal. And the Necron tier wanted this. And so in order to keep all the various Necron tier dynasties as they were known in line because there were wars of secession a lot and the triarch was struggling to keep everybody together the silent king king united the race and took them to war on the old ones and it was a just ish cause however it was a disaster the old ones were sort of the ancestors of the eldar in a way and these guys had mastery of the webway they had powerful weapons and while the necron tier probably had the better technology the webway was really screwing them over, and so the Necron tier were basically just an annoyance after a while. Of course, at first the old ones took them very seriously, but eventually they just became a nuisance. At which point, um, the dynasties again realised, we can do better on our own, and the second wars of secession began. And at this point, the Silent King was known as Cesare? S-Z-A-R-E-H. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. I'm going to call him Cesare. Or Cesare, I'm not quite sure. And he was the last silent king. Because during his reign, um, he was greet he was um, visited by a stranger. Um, his name was the Deceiver. Now, of course, he did not introduce himself as the Deceiver, because this was the Catan, or one of the Catan. And he was sent ahead by the Catan to negotiate with the Necron tier and deceive them into doing the Catan's bidding. And as the deceiver, that is what he did. And he promised victory over the old ones, no matter the cost. And the Triarch and the Silent King, desperate to keep the race together, accepted. And so the Necron tier ceased to exist. They were granted their immortality. However, the cost was insanely high. The cost was their souls. Giant soul furnaces burned day and night. The Catan flew around them, drinking in all the energy of the Necron tier that were dying and being reborn as Necrons. The Necron tier ceased to exist. The Silent King and some of the others, such as Overlords, Phaerons, Lichguard to a degree, Cryptex and what have you, retained a sense of conscience or consciousness. They could think. They... So the Silent King was very 
happy and disappointed in a way. Because he had a new metallic body, all the aches and pains of um, flesh were gone. But there was a gnawing absence, and that was his soul. In a way, his spirit was gone, destroyed, eaten by the Catan in a way. The warriors were completely drained and left as automatons. The immortals were not much better. And you got more thinking power as you went up the ranks, up to the highest up at the Silent King, who basically had an entire function left intact. Um, and that was how the Necrons were created. And the Catan took in these life energies and they became just about immortal. Using the power of the Catan and the Dolmen Gates, they breached the webway and before long the Catan and the Necrons were victorious over the Old Ones. The Old Ones fled, those that were still alive fled the galaxy and have never been seen since. However, this had drained the Catan greatly. As you might expect, fighting a war against gods would do that. And so the Necrons, led by the Silent King, who still had complete control over the entire Necron race through command chain links, through the Overlords and the Warriors, he had basic synapse, a sort of synapse over the entire Necron race. And he changed the commands from attack the Old Ones and co, such as the Eldar for one, to attack the Catan. They turned on their creator. And this war was brutal. The Necrons took massive, massive casualties. And they could never truly destroy the Catan. The only Catan who was actually destroyed um, was known as the Flayer. His name is really lots of vowels and not many consonants and I can't really pronounce it. But he was known as the Flayer and he's the reason the Flayed Ones exist. But that's another story. But the Catan were unable to be destroyed. They were taken apart, blown apart, into the Catan shards, which are all trapped in the Tesseract Labyrinths. And the Tesseract Labyrinths are still there, and that is what the Catan shards that we see on our battlefields are part of. They are basically a fragment of the Catan. If they were a full Catan, such as a transcendent Catan in the Tesseract Vault, they would be utterly unstoppable. As a fragment, they are weaker. However, the Necrons still do not like to let the Catan shard out of the Tesseract Labyrinth, even if it would except in the direst circumstance, because there is still a risk that that Catan Shard will turn on the Necrons and not go back in its box. Which is a minute risk, but it's a risk the Necrons don't like taking. They're not risky people, or machines. And eventually, all of the Catan Shards were captured, or at least as many as the Necrons could find, were captured, placed in Tesseract Labyrinths. And the Silent King then issued one last edict. And that was to enter the entire Necron race into cryogenic, well, was it, no, not quite cryogenic, but shut down, hibernate. All the wo all the tomb worlds were created, all the ne regular Necron worlds in the Necron Empire were converted into tomb complexes, where the warriors, Lich Guard, etc. were all stored. And once everything was packed away, uh, the worlds were sealed. The Triopratorians did not go to sleep, they were still active and they patrolled the galaxy, um, projecting Necron ways upon um, weaker races and keeping an eye on Tomb Worlds for any signs of awakening. And the Silent King set the clock to 60 million years. He realised that the age of the Necron was over, the Eldar would have a go for the time. They were mortal, the Necrons were not. Mankind had not even really begun to exist at this point. Mankind did not exist. The Eldar were only just beginning as a race of power anyway. I think they existed for a while before, but they were only just now coming to ascendancy. And he set the clock for 60 million years. And they would wake up at, this would be around about M40, M41, M42 would be their wake up point. Um, and with that, he cut the courts, every link he had, every command uplink he had to every Necron, he cut them. He felt a great shame for what he had done. All the damage that he had caused, the, the extinction of the Necron tier was on his head. And he actually ignored um, Orican the Diviner, who was a cryptic in um, Cesare's court, who spoke up and said that it was a bad idea, but he ignored him. Everyone else was, yes, we're keen on this. And Orican probably went to sleep sort of 
subtly grinning because his prediction came true. He does that. So the Silent King severed his command links and he sort of went off on... I think he went sort of soul-searching. If a soulless robot can go soul-searching, if you know what I mean. So he just disappeared out of the galaxy. He has returned since. He is back. Um, his main problem is with the Tyranids because um, pretty much it... If the Tyranids eat too much, they'll be unstoppable, even for a combined Necron Empire, which is a bad thing. And now the Necrons are starting to wake up. The first sightings were M38, M39, possibly M40. Uh, no, the first few Toon Worlds were waking up to see the Heresy, so that's back in M31. Activity's been picking up since, some still haven't woken up. Um, I suppose if some people understand the idea of the vaults in Fallout... The Fallout universe, some opened early, some were designed to open late, some opened too late, some have, are never going to open, some have been destroyed, and so on. And that's the fate of the Necron Tomb world. Some will never get back to full activity, some reactivated pretty well. Mandragora of the Soltec dynasty was one of them. Anyway, so that leaves us with the current state of affairs. The Necrons are waking up, and they have two or three goals. Every overlord sort of has his own goals. His ways of getting them are all different. Uh, one is to see the Necron dynasties return to their former glory, have a Necron empire across the galaxy again. The second is a bit more exclusive, and that is biotransference. That is getting out of the bloody metal bodies and getting back into real flesh again. I think the reason for this is because it was suspected that Cesare was having serious thoughts about biotransference as he severed the link and so that because it was heavily on his mind sort of transferred into the minds of the now dormant necron overlords that's the theory anyway so many necron tomb worlds are searching for ways to change back into flesh whether that be through humanity or through another race entirely the necron tier are hoping to return one day Maybe not as the Necron tier, maybe under a new name, but the Necrons hopefully will no longer exist. Their sworn enemy is the Eldar, because the Eldar regards soullessness as the horror above all horrors. Um, yeah, so that's a brief history of the Necrons, or the Necron tier and the Necrons. The war in heaven, which was the fight against the old ones, the fight then against the Catan. This, this fluff was sort of an expansion on what we had in the fact that the timeline advanced from being slaves to the Catan to destroying the Catan. So it tweaked slightly, but not too bad. And I quite like the fluff. I do prefer the old fluff, though, I have to say. Although this is more expansive. Um, so yeah, that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did. And leave any comments down below. Um, give me your thoughts on your thoughts on the history of the Necron race. I'm hoping to do a similar video to this on the history of the Dark Eldar. I may need two videos to do that. But hopefully I'll get it in one. So look out for that in the future. And I'm hoping to get a video on Piscina 4. Which was um, part of an ongoing mini-series within 40k stories about Gazkul. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. My name is Michael. And I will see you again.